Hi, good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear and see me? Hello. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Hi. Uh, yes. Hi. Uh, yes, we can. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll just wait for a couple of minutes more, perhaps, just so that everyone uh, has joined the meeting, and then we'll start. Yep. So, uh, hi again. I think we're nearly there. We have uh, around 26 participants, and I won't keep you waiting anymore. So, uh, let's start. So, uh, welcome you all. Thank you all for joining on time. And uh, as you would be aware, we are here because we are launching a three course series on reinforcement learning. And I am going to be uh, your instructor or session lead for the three, three courses. Uh, my name is. Uh, Farhan, and uh, I just wanted to run you all through what the course is about and how the next few weeks will be spent and what will be your key takeaways from the course and also field any questions that you might have about, about the course or the deadlines or anything else. Uh, so just give me a moment, I'll uh, share my screen and then Uh, yeah, is my screen visible to everyone? Can someone confirm in the chat, please? Yes. Thank you. Good. Uh, so, like I said, this is uh, you know the kickoff for uh, for a three course series on reinforcement learning, where we are, we are going to learn about reinforcement learning, its basics, uh, deep reinforcement learning, and then dive into uh, the different applications of reinforcement learning. Uh, today is the kickoff, uh, and then from Thursday we'll start the classes. So, yeah. So be before I start talking about the course and everything else, uh, let us have a very quick, uh, you know, introduction from everyone so that you get to know me and I get to know you. Um, it, it does help to like, uh, you know, create uh, a good uh, professional relationship if you if we know each other, and then we feel comfortable talking to each other. So uh, just to add a little bit of twist, uh, we are going to follow a format for the introductions. Uh, so, you know, we just need to uh, tell what our name is and how it is pronounced 
if you think it's uh, you know it's not very common name then you might want to uh, tell us how you pronounce your name and then what do you do uh, at Qualcomm and what 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 else you like to do for fun for profit and then this uh, a little fun question which is what do you think AI stands for okay and uh, for this question we, we are only looking for wrong answers so uh, of course we all know AI stands for uh, artificial intelligence but we are looking for uh, only wrong answers so I'll start with myself. Uh, my name is Farhan, like I said. Uh, it's, it's, it's two syllables that's pronounced Farhan, uh, depending on whether you, you, know, you want to spell it in English or German, perhaps it will be spelled uh, slightly differently, but uh, that is the name. And I prefer the pronouns he and him, uh, unless I'm programming in C++. So uh, that is where I use the third pronoun. And what do I do? So I'm a software engineer or I was a software engineer for around eight years. And then I turned into uh, an educator and an AI researcher. And what does that really mean? Uh, so, so, so we'll see. So, uh, you know, what you see on the screen is a few things that I do. So some of these things I do for a living and there are things that I do just for fun because I like doing them. I don't uh, necessarily want to make any sort of money from that. So, uh, you know, just 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 as a fun quiz, uh, th these are the things that you see on the screen. So one of the things that I do is researching how learning can be accelerated, how you can learn fast. Uh, any technology, any subject matter, how you can learn it much faster than you would do in college or on your own. Uh, another thing I do is building self-driving cars, which, uh, which which is the reason I kind of switched from a software career uh, to this alternative career. And then being up to date with uh, the most recent advances in the field of AI and machine learning and building software. So these are four things. And some of these things I do for fun, other things I, other things I do for profit or for a living. So let's see if uh, you can guess correctly which of these are, sorry, that wasn't intended, but let's see how many of you can correctly guess. I want to see a few answers in the chat. Is it both for fun and profit? <laughs> yeah, All of the above? Yeah. <laughs> because we don't have radio <laughs> buttons. I mean, I, I couldn't find the Unicode for radio buttons. But yeah, there are certain things that I, I might be doing for both fun and profit. No one wants to take a shot? I think the researching accelerated learning techniques is for profit. Um, okay. Building self-driving cars seems more fun and maybe for profit. Um, being next in AI and ML seems for fun. Building software is for fun and profit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think that is almost accurate. Yeah, I, I do see a few answers in the chat. Researching is for fun. Uh, yeah, research could be fun. Okay, I'll disclose the answers. So, uh, so what I essentially do for a living is researching how you can learn faster, you or I or anyone else. Uh, what are the techniques? How do you design the educational content so you learn faster than you normally would do? And part of that is uh, staying on top of what the most recent uh, developments are in the field of AI and machine learning and to some extent autonomous driving. So uh, yeah, I do that for a living. Uh, besides that, what I do purely for fun is building self-driving cars. Of course, I, I, I cannot afford both uh, legally and financially building a real self-driving car. Uh, I don't have the bandwidth, the time, and the resources to do so. So I uh, do that in simulators. And then I also like working with deep learning and deep reinforcement learning algorithms, uh, mostly in these simulators when I'm you know, trying to uh, train the self-driving cars to do certain things. So that is more like a fun activity and part, large part of it is just writing code. So that is again fun. And uh, if you ask me what uh, AI stands for, 
uh, I would say artfully ignorant because I don't believe the current uh, breed of algorithms are yet there where you can compare them to any sort of intelligence. Uh, it's good, you know, there are things that work that help us uh, slightly. They work better than hard coded software, but you can't really call them intelligence. So I would call them, they are still artfully ignorant. Uh, cool. Uh, so now it's uh, everyone else's turn and we can go in any order. Like who would like to go first? Uh, Same three questions. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, so like I will go to it first. So my name is Anvesha. I'm basically with Qualcomm uh, Rally. Uh, so like well, what I basically do for fun is I, I basically like to hack some of the, the codes uh, available for the PyTorch. Uh, I like and uh, so so my definition of AI is like artificial ignorance. That's good. Yep. Thanks, Anish. Who wants to go next? Hi, uh, I can go next. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Hey, uh, my name is Dian. Um, so I work in Qualcomm for high performance CPU design. So we recently joined Qualcomm from Nubia. Uh, if, if, if you guys noticed the uh, acquisition recently. And I do, uh, uh, what was the next part? Oh, I want to do for fun profit. Okay. For fun, I do uh, I do babysitting for my kids for fun. And uh, also I do, sometimes I do uh, casual, hyper casual game development for fun. Uh, yeah, well, well, third question. Uh, oh, what well, AI stands for? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, totally irrelevant answer. AI for me sometimes it stands for Alan Iverson. Sorry, what was that? Alan, Alan Iverson, the MBA star. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, who I else? Go next. Uh... Uh, yeah. This is Akshay Chavan. Um, I'm from Burlington. I work in the printers and uh, imaging technology in uh, Qualcomm. And uh, I've been at Qualcomm for probably five, six more, six years now. Um, for me, AI is, it comes from the way back time when I was actually more into machine learning part and everybody there used to call it as magic, which kind of was a conversation killer. But that turned out to be things where, you know, I, I realized how people understand it and it's much more uh, difficult to let people understand what you really do uh, instead of re directly going into math. So I still right. consider AI or the whole thing as magic and try to explain people in easier terms. And in fun, uh, with my newfound knowledge of AWS, I'm, I like building web apps, uh, which I just put it out there for free. That's very cool. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Akshay. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Dahun, and um, I work for an MPU team, uh, which MPU stands for is Neural Processing Unit, which is part of the chip on the Snapdragon. So that's the part that I'm working on um, internal right now in Markham office. and. What I do for fun is um, playing a lot of music as well as playing tennis um, because it's like a socially distancing activity these days. It's been something I've been doing to get more of the workouts going on. And um, I guess what AI stands for for me is like augmenting innovation um, where we just continue to uh, bring more innovation into the world and improve the world. That is a serious definition though. But it's okay. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dawn. Okay, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Um, hi, my name is Oli. Uh, I am an intern here at Toronto in the ADAS team. And so, yeah, what I do for fun really these days, it's not as often, but I used to play basketball. <laughs> so it's been limited again since we're in lockdown here. Um, and then my definition of AI, well, I'll take the uh, mainstream pop culture definition and I'll say, it is robots taking over. Yeah. Thanks, Ali. 
Hi, uh, hi, Sharan. Hello, everybody. So, myself, Shashi Khan Kulkarni. Uh, I would prefer to be called Shashi. Uh, I think it's easier. And uh, also for fun, I uh, play badminton and uh, cricket. And uh, for me, AI uh, stands for uh, an anonymous intelligence because um, currently uh, it works like a black box. So there's uh, not a perfect theory or a perfect uh, way to define how it works. So the research is still going on on that, I believe. Um, but uh, yeah, it is still anonymous in some sense. So yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ashwin. I am hey. Sushmita. Uh, so I work for the corporate R&D team at Boulder. And um, yeah, it's basically working on uh, drivers and uh, tools for the Qualcomm's AI chip. And so for fun, I like to cook. And I also build um, biomedical imaging applications. And I define AI as uh, the need to articulating immensely because whatever AI provides to us, there's a lot of uh, thought that has to go into what we're doing is right or wrong, the uh, implications of it and what the system is actually learning uh, and things around that. Yeah, that's pretty much. Thanks, Sushmita. Do, do you do biomedical imaging for fun? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm John Wolf. Um, by the way, that's really baller, like biomedical imaging for fun. Um, so uh, uh, I don't have any such awesome hobbies. I sail, I build tree houses, and I take M ML classes for fun. And uh, for me, AI stands for Albert Einstein. Uh, so that's me. Thank you. Uh, hello. Hello. Hey, uh, my name is Xin Yang. Uh, I'm also an intern at Qualcomm. I'm in the uh, AI DSP application team. So we basically use the Hexagon DSP to build AI applications. Uh, for fun, I also like to just learn ML and AI. And uh, I also enjoy gardening. Uh, for me, uh, AI also stands for action item. Cool, thank you. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Dimitrios. I'm calling from uh, from the Cambridge uh, department. So I work as a, a verification engineer uh, here. Uh, as part of uh, fa my fun activities are uh, running and cycling mainly. Also, I enjoy uh, following courses on the AI and uh, ML. And uh, now this I have found interest in, uh, in robots like a raw system. And uh, yeah, for me, AI, I don't know if that's uh, alternative in, in difference, perhaps. <laughs> thank you. Good, thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Kamla and I'm based in the Cambridge uh, office and I work in the voice and music team. Uh, for fun, I mostly do I play games and uh, go for cycling or running? Um, and uh, for me, AI is mostly stands for after innovation because you get uh, a lot out of uh, AI after you have innovated something by making something quick or getting to know about the new things from that. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, this is Wen Jin. Hi, hi. I work in uh, New Jersey, um, system engineer. So I, uh, we are building uh, 5G millimeter wave uh, prototypes. Uh, for fun, I think I enjoy uh, exercising, taking care of my kids and uh, learning some musical instruments. Um, so um, art, AI for me is, uh, I think, artistic interest. I still want to learn something related to performing arts or um, more general art in my leisure time. Cool, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Hashim Sheikh. Uh, I also based out of uh, New York City. I also work in uh, 5G millimeter wave, uh, part of uh, uh, infra, infra For me, 
uh, I've been working on uh, what you call uh, on the side, uh, learning a lot of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning frameworks, uh, various algorithms. Uh, I've been also uh, learning a lot of uh, online classes uh, for companies conducting. Yeah, and during the fun time, I spend uh, nowadays most of the time with my kids. For me, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence are still trying to figure out what to do with this and how to do this. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hello. Uh, so I don't know if you can hear me while I'm speaking through a mask. I, <laughs> my I name is okay. My name is Chris, um, okay. and uh, I'm in the I'm in the uh, location technology team, uh, mm -hmm. located in the Bay Area been at Qualcomm for nearly 13 years now. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, I work on location technology and actually for past three years or so, I've been working on ML projects within Qualcomm uh, for the location technology. And we're actually working on deploying one. So uh, we're actually uh, one of the first ones to try to deploy ML solution on modem. So it's a, it's a fun project right now and a lot of challenges. And um, for uh, hobby used to have a lot of hobbies, but now I'm I have a, like a two months old daughter, so <laughs> she takes all my time, <laughs> all my sleep cycles too. <laughs> and so yeah, that's uh, that's that. Um, and for AI, I think someone mentioned it already, but AI stands for me it stands like an action item because within Qualcomm AI, everybody it, it used to stand as an action item for like all the meeting. <laughs> afterwards so it's just kind of like driven into me for the last 13 years <laughs> so yeah that's uh that's it yeah that's very cool you're blending fun and profit <laughs> hi um my name is marcelo i am with qualcomm for about eight years um last year i've been working in uh, modeling aspects of the nr protocol into the uh, modern power consumption um for fun, I like to ride my bicycle, especially when my son decides to come along. And um, to me, AI is just an awesome idea. Cool, cool. Thank you so much, Marcelo. Hi, uh, my name is Mani. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, great. So yeah, so I've been with Qualcomm for uh, about three, three four years now, uh, close to four years now. I work in the Wi-Fi team. Uh, I'm a system engineer and, and we design algorithms for Wi-Fi. And uh, uh, for leisure, I think I spend a lot of my time with my family, my son, uh, especially during lockdown. Uh, we go out and not not that much, but whenever we get a chance, we, we try to go out and, and have spend some time and the other other side other part of time would be doing some home renovation so that's how i spend my time these days uh, regarding to what ai means i'm um i did do i did do a few very good online courses uh, but i'm not too much into ai application in my work uh, neither i do a lot of hobby projects so for me ai what i think ai uh, stands for is uh, you know, it's it's a very uh, powerful tool for optimizing systems uh, that that engineers can take help from. So that is what I I look AI at. And for me, reinforcement learning is I think the most uh, uh, I would say the the best match uh, tool that that can optimize uh, that can be used as an optimization tool. In, in, in my line of work, and that's why I'm interested in this course. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Zach. Um, I do CPU performance research in Raleigh. Um, for fun, I do Lego robotics with kids. I've mentored a, a first robotics team, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and I would say AI stands for alternative information because I look at it as getting some information and then also comparing it to the other information and putting it all together. Cool, thank you so much. Lego is my personal favorite too. Hi, 
Uh, my name is Anish. I've been in the Wi-Fi firmware team for three years now. For fun, um, I like cycling, chess, basketball. Uh, I, I do all of these regularly. Um, AI for me is some type of specific intelligence to find solutions to a very specific problem. Um, that, that's been my notion uh, until now, and I hope I find something new uh, in this particular course. Cool. Yes, we will try to do that. Okay, what's remaining? Hi. Um... I am uh, Sundar. Um, I am in the. I work from the Qualcomm New England office in Boxborough, and uh, I'm part of the modem hardware team um, here in uh, New England. Um, so for fun, uh, I I play tennis. Um, it's a good. Uh, it's a good activity to uh, to uh, actually over the past year, as long as we could play outdoors. Um, and, uh, to me, uh, AI, um, I mean, I, I don't, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure, like if I can expand AI, I guess it's, I mean, I, if I have to, you know, take inspiration from what you just said, I think it's, it's artful, but having some kind of a positive impact. So it's artful impact, I would say. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I enrolled in this course primarily to learn more on uh, reinforcement learning, as I think uh, that will have good applicability in, in modern systems. Thank you. Thank you, Sundar. Hi, I'm Dave. Um, I work on architecture sort of estimation and pro like uh, architecture estimation, basically. Uh, for fun, I play a lot of board games, also take ML courses for fun. Um, and uh, I guess for me, it, uh, we work on image processing. So this, uh, I guess AI could be advanced image, advanced imaging or something along those lines because we get some nice advancements in the imaging domain from it. Right. Thanks, Dave. Who else is left? Uh, hey, I'm uh, Ari Klein. Uh, I work in the uh, modem team in New Jersey. Um, so we're looking at using uh, uh, machine learning for improving uh, error correction and other you know, modem uh, blocks. Um, for fun, uh, I enjoy uh, sometimes you know, modding video games, having fun with that. Uh, AI for me is uh, Asimov Isaac. Uh, I grew up reading a lot of Isaac Asimov and I'm uh, very excited about eventually getting there, but obviously we have a ways to go. Right, absolutely, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Peng Fei Ye. I'm from RFC City Group from Munich in Germany. I'm a site availability engineer, and for fun, I like reading. Uh, I wrote my master thesis back three years ago on the topic related to machine learning. So uh, for me, it stands the AI for modeling and problem solving. That's it. Thank you. Hi, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so my name is Levy. Uh, I'm based in Cambridge and uh, I'm an in the audio team for more than seven years where we write software for Bluetooth chips. Uh, my hobbies are uh, windsurfing, uh, cycling, roller skating, so anything which is outside. Uh, for me, AI stands for almost intelligent and uh, that's about it. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else left? No. All right, then uh, I think we're good with the introductions. And when we start meeting from Thursday onwards, uh, obviously we'll uh, get to know each other a lot better. Uh, there will perhaps be some coursework that would require you to team up. So it's a good idea to just uh, you know engage with your co-learners and get to know them and their interests. Uh, so when the time comes when you have to team up, 
and perhaps decide a project or part of a project that you want to work on, uh, you know who's doing what. But uh, we'll come to that in due course. So uh, let's move on. And so the agenda is just uh, four things. Uh, I'll talk about what the course is about. Like I said, this is a three course series. Uh, so I'll talk about what each of those courses uh, contains. And then what is the intended, uh, uh, you know, learner base. So, you know, I believe all of you all have already seen the syllabus that we circulated, but if you haven't, uh, I'll just briefly talk about what the intention is, uh, like who's the int intended learners are, and then what are uh, going to be the key takeaways from the course. And uh, then to wrap up, we'll talk about how we'll run this course and the tools we are going to use and the timelines and stuff like that. So uh, about the course uh, overview, uh, because we want to uh, you know, cover everything, starting with the basics of reinforcement learning, uh, then the different algorithms, then deep reinforcement learning, it's different uh, variants. So we sort of bucketed things into three different courses. Uh, today we are kicking off the first course, which is the introduction to reinforcement learning. The session starts, the first classroom session starts from Thursday, this Thursday. Uh, but yeah, this is the first course. This is going to run for approximately four weeks. And this will be, uh, this is where you get to learn the basics of reinforcement learning. Now I'm aware that some of you are already, uh, you know, you have done courses or you might actually be using reinforcement learning or machine learning uh, at work. Uh, so we'll still try to keep it uh, very engaging for everyone. And we will give everyone the flexibility to work on, you know, more or less complex problems so that you don't feel bored during the course. So uh, the whole thing is going to run for 12 weeks starting, uh, starting, you know, this Thursday. But right now we're focused on the first four weeks, which is the introduction to reinforcement learning course. Okay, how does this three course series or this first course differ from anything else out there, right? There are lots of reinforcement learning, uh, you know, MOOCs, massively online courses. There are certificate programs. There are also three YouTube videos. Uh, so uh, how this essentially differs from the rest of the uh, rest of the things out there is that uh, one, it's very fast paced because all of us are busy. Uh, we don't have time. So the focus is on learning quickly and whatever it takes to learn quickly and also retention so that you don't learn things and you forget them. So how we do that is through a project first approach. And what, uh, what I mean by that is that we start with a problem and which could be a toy problem in the beginning, which could be a more complex problem as we progress, but we start with a uh, problem and then we see how it can be solved using a reinforcement learning approach and we try to code up things. Uh, that is not how uh, you normally, that is not what you normally do in uh, you know, courses online or in college. You start with some you know, sound theoretical basis, you understand the theory, then you write a little bit of code. Uh, but the difference here is once you start with, with the code, you understand the problem a lot better. Right, because you're writing code and through that process of writing the code and trying to solve the problem, you understand a lot of things a lot better than you would do if you were simply going through a book and reading chapters and trying, uh, you know, uh, parsing equations. So um, in my personal experience, uh, that works a lot better. And given that all of us uh, come from an engineering background or we are doing, uh, we are writing code or we're building things, uh, it is, also a lot more interesting and engaging if you build things first. Of course, theory is important to know because you don't want to make silly mistakes which people have already uh, you know, discovered. And you also want to benefit from the research that has happened over decades or centuries. So that is important. But uh, the reason we are taking this diagonally uh, opposite approach is starting with a problem, then building a project, writing code, you know, running simulations, and then moving towards the theory, we'll look at equations, we'll look at a little bit of derivations of proof, but it's not a very theoretical course, so we won't delve very deep into uh, you know, derivations and proofs. Uh, uh, this, this is going to be a lot of uh, writing, uh, code writing, 
uh, which makes you practice the same co uh, concepts again and again and also uh, lets you explore the problem because when you explore the problem when you deep, uh, when when you dive really uh, when you dive really deep into the problem uh, then you naturally you know come up with uh, solutions some of the, some of those solutions will, will be based on incorrect assumptions and you know unsound uh, maybe techniques uh, but we can refine that if we iterate uh, many times so this is uh, the course methodology uh, you know being project first uh, how long uh, we already talked about that uh, you know each course is going to be roughly four weeks uh, if you look at what uh, roughly constitutes the syllabus there's a link in this slide which I, i'll sh share later uh, with uh, with the link to the full uh, syllabus but what you can see here is uh, the major projects we are going to uh, to be working on right so in the introduction to reinforcement learning uh, which starts on thursday uh, we'll start we, we will actually build our own problem sort of so we'll start with uh, a game that i call fool's ball which is uh, kind of a you know silly version of foosball or football and it is an interesting problem to solve using reinforcement learning for uh, a variety of reasons we'll come to that when we start the sessions but basically we will first create the problem then we'll try to understand how uh, what are the different ways you can solve it using dynamic programming and uh, you know reinforcement learning and then we'll start writing code and building an agent that can play the game and that will this will happen over these four weeks of coursework right in parallel we'll also be working on a more uh, you know well known problem again it's more like uh, you can say it's a toy problem but it's important because how once again when you solve this problem then you gain really in depth understanding of what reinforcement learning problems look like how you solve them and then also the equations and the theory behind them so the open ai gm is a framework for reinforcement learning algorithms and training agents we we'll use that framework and it uh, it has a bunch of uh, you know problems and baselines scores or metrics that that are like the minimum you want to achieve so we will try to solve the open ai gym problem uh, sorry we will use the open ai gym environment and there's a taxi problem in there that we'll try to solve which basically solves the problem of picking up passengers and dropping them off and trying to minimize some sort of a cost and uh, then in the next four weeks during the next four weeks uh, we'll move to more uh, complex problems where the data is you know more high dimensional and the decisions are more complex so there is an environment called slime volleyball which is like you know a volleyball uh, version of pacman uh, and we'll try to solve that environment is challenging because now you are dealing with uh, first of all you are dealing with image data instead of you know in the first four weeks we'll be dealing mostly with uh, low dimensional tabular data but uh, you know this next four weeks will focus on image data like in slime volleyball so the data itself is very high dimensional you could be looking at say and you know 320 cross 20 280 sort of uh, uh, screen and then you try to make sense of it and then you try to act within that environment so that you uh, meet some sort of a score uh, you maximize some sort of a score so that is what we'll do uh, during the next four weeks now there are two versions of uh, the same uh, volleyball problem but in one version you are automatically given you can look under the hood and you can look at the uh, you know what is going on behind the scenes so you get all the data in the form of a vector or array like where where is the ball where are the players where there is a net and stuff like that so you get that as a vector that problem is relatively simpler to solve the other variant is what i was talking about is where you have to use the pixel data right so you are looking at Uh, an entire screen snapshots of the game after uh, every few milliseconds and then you are trying to understand the whole sequence what is happening and then how how do you make your agent outperform the uh, other agent so we'll solve the first one uh, by the way what you see here on the screen the c stands for classroom projects these these are the ones that we'll, we'll be working on during our sessions and the p is for uh, sort of your take home projects that you'll work uh, alone or in teams and then you will have to submit it for grading 
So the classroom problem will be working, uh, you know, trying to solve slime volleyball using uh, using uh, the data that we get as vectors. And the take home problem will be where you'll use, you will solve the same problem, but using pixel data. And then in the la last four weeks, we will move on to even more challenging problems where we'll uh, train an agent to drive uh, a car, which is just like a video game, but you are trying to learn to drive the car in two dimensional environments. Uh, this will be uh, the classroom project. Uh, we will we'll, we'll learn different types of algorithms. As you can see, uh, the middle four weeks are for value-based algorithms. The last four weeks are for policy-based uh, methods. So there are different approaches and we'll see you know, which ones perform better in this sort of cases uh, that we'll discuss in the classroom sessions. But uh, during the last four weeks, you will basically build an agent in the classroom, live code an agent that can drive a car. Now, of course, this is a three, this is going to be a 2D environment for various reasons, uh, because it's very time consuming to train an agent uh, in three dimensional and resources are also, uh, you know, comp computation heavy. So we will work on a 2D environment, but the same can be the same algorithms the same approach can be used in 3D as well. Uh, and then the project you will be working on your own will be one where you will learn to pick up or move objects around using a robotic um, manipulator, actuators, right? So uh, this is again looking at a whole scene and trying to make thing, trying to make sense of things like what are those objects, where are they currently placed, and what is your goal. And then what is the right way to pick, uh, pick an object and move it around? Uh, again, this problem has many different variants. Uh, the environment uh, that we'll be using has many different variants. We'll pick one which can be solved in a reasonable amount of time because our goal is sort of to understand and explore all the algorithms. Uh, we don't want to pick uh, a very low hanging fruit, which, uh, which is not really interesting to us. At the same time, we don't want to pick a very complex problem either which we cannot reasonably solve in, in a month or so. And uh, this is important to understand because reinforcement learning uh, tends to be even more uh, you know, finicky than uh, deep learning itself. So you have to really do a lot of babysitting, you have to do a lot of de uh, debugging, troubleshooting uh, to make things work, right? And that is, I think, uh, the essence of what you learn working with different algorithms because the algorithms th themselves are simple variants of one another, but uh, just how you make them work or how a particular paper ma made them work, including all the tips and tricks, that is the important part. Okay, who is the course for? So this is basically open to anyone, and uh, you know we have very few, uh, very few, uh, you know, prerequisites or requirements. So anyone who is in general interested in AI or how, how reinforcement learning, and someone mentioned that they see reinforcement learning as the closest you could get to AI uh, right now. And I agree with that, you know, because this is part of what we call decision making. So basically training an algorithm to make th these intelligent decisions. And it does feel like real AI sometimes. And it's very interesting to, uh, you know, see your agent perform tasks that only humans could like a while back. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in uh, stuff like that, uh, if you are already engaged in uh, engineering or research work in AI, that is wonderful. But even if you are and like, if you plan to, or you're just taking the course like that, that is also okay. And if you want to apply uh, re reinforcement learning or deep reinforcement learning to your uh, existing projects, uh, then also it's a very good starting point because you learn this, these broad spectrum of algorithms, you sort of understand which ones to pick for which use cases. And that is all you need when you're getting started with a new project. In terms of prerequisites, all that is needed is Python programming experience because we really are not going to uh, you know, get started with the fundamentals of Python. Uh, Python is really easy to pick up if you have never uh, ever programmed earlier in Python. If you know C or C++ or MATLAB, it should be I would say a few days of work. And if you know there are individuals who are not comfortable with Python, then uh, 
we can like we can sh I'll share a few links where you can get started with Python and uh, ramp up very quickly. Uh, more importantly, you should have some experience building and debugging neural networks because building neural networks is nowadays very easy. You just uh, you can use any of the frameworks, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Keras, anything. It's relatively easy. There's a lot of documentation, but debugging them, making them really work uh, the way you want them to, uh, that is the more challenging part. So we expect that you have some experience debugging them. Uh, even if you haven't done a lot of uh, programming using these uh, frameworks, you haven't built a lot of deep neural networks, uh, you should just, if you have that, uh, you know, if, if you're willing to put in the effort and learn how to do it, then also it's fine. Uh, and then uh, some experience with TensorFlow because we are going to use TensorFlow. Uh, when we start the deep reinforcement, the deep part of the reinforcement learning series, uh, we will be using TensorFlow. But even if you have worked with PyTorch, uh, I think TensorFlow is again similar and easier to pick up in a few days. Okay, in terms of what we are going to learn, so of course we'll go through different kinds of algorithms and sort of when they work, when they don't, although it's, uh, it's, there's no sound theory around which algorithm to pick when, but instead based on different benchmarks and the experiments that others have run and the experiments that we'll run, we, have, we will have a good understanding of which algorithms and are out there and how to pick and choose from them. Uh, you will also build your own environment and agent. So you have a very good understanding of uh, all the different frameworks that are out there, OpenAI GM and Unity ML agents. And there are, there are a few other uh, environment but once you build your own environment and you build your own agent and then you train them, then you have uh, this edge over anyone else who is just you know using an environment like a black box. Of course, we'll build lots of agents and train them in the open gym uh, environment, uh, which which is the environment that we are going to use predominantly. Uh, next thing is learning from pixel data which is also part of you know, applying algorithms to the real world because a lot of uh, you know, things that you want to do with reinforcement learning, they often involve understanding high dimensional image data. So we'll see how to uh, do that. Uh, another interesting thing is that we'll build agents that will learn uh, by playing against each other. So sort of a game theoretic approach uh, that is again, very interesting uh, because you know, it just gives you a way to generate a lot of data because the agents are playing against each other. And if you if you model it correctly, then they are learning new and novel things uh, from this interplay. We'll also see uh, how you use reinforcement learning to train physical system like robotic arms. That is the last project, of course. So we'll, we'll be using PyBullet and we'll see how you can actually model physics without act, you know actually hard coding the kinematics how, how can you model complex physics and how can you build things like a robotic arm that can we can move items around and then we'll dive a little bit into how uh, other environments like gazebo and unity ml agents work uh, unity ml agent is especially interesting because uh, it gives you around a dozen or so environment, which are all high dimensional and require different kinds of algorithms. And there are already existing benchmarks and baselines, uh, but we won't be using Unity ML because uh, it requires, uh, you know, it has hardware requirements. You need, you need to be able to uh, uh, re render the environment uh, again and again. And of course the environments are much more complex. And so the timeline is just not right for you know trying to work with this sort of environment but we'll know what how unity ml agent uh, api looks like and how you can use it if your uh, project requires right uh, so as i already said we start with the first course this month uh, then uh, sometime next month we'll do the second course on value-based methods and then the third course will follow in june uh, how will we conduct the sessions so every Monday at exactly this time, which is 10.30 a.m. PST, we will have an office hour, right? This will be roughly 60 to 90 minutes long. So I'll, keep it, I'll try to keep it within 60 minutes, but uh, 60 to 90 minutes long. And uh, this will be every Monday. 
uh, the actual classroom sessions will happen on Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, the timing is different. The classroom sessions will run from 9.30 to 11.30. Uh, the Zoom links, I think, have already been shared with you. Uh, but these links are on the slide as well. Uh, in the classroom, like I said, uh, it's not going to be a traditional approach where I'm just presenting and talking about algorithms. Uh, rather, what we'll try to do is build things. So there will be live coding sessions. Uh, we'll perhaps have breakout, uh, you know, where where if like we have 30 participants, then we'll divide ourselves in five or six teams and then brainstorm and write code. And then, uh, you know, come back to the main group and then we discuss a solution and then we repeat this and build an algorithm. Hey, Farhan. Looks yeah. like some confusion. Uh, what we have is a uh, one, two, three, which is like a uh, ten to uh, your session will like, start from ten o'clock uh, to some. There is some discrepancy in terms of scheduling. Uh, I'll check that with Marisa once. But uh, what we agreed on was like we'll do uh, these office hours, ten thirty to eleven thirty a.m. Uh, and the regular classroom sessions will be nine thirty to eleven thirty. But if there's some discrepancy, we'll sort that out. Hi, Farhan. One question. Uh, is the classes recorded? Like, can we go through yeah, the yeah. video? Okay. Right, right. I'll, I was going to come to that. So all the sessions will be recorded, including uh, this one and the office hours and everything. But because of the nature of the sessions we'll have where you are writing code and you know, we are, we, we are using breakout rooms to form teams and work collaboratively, uh, if you miss out on a session, then of course, uh, watching the recordings will not be uh, as good as participating in the session. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I just wanted to like uh, have that oh, flexibility. Yeah. Yeah, everything will be recorded and all yeah. the yeah. slides and code and everything will be shared. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Sure. Right. Uh, so uh, what does it, it require uh, from you? Like I said, there are two two-hour sessions on Thursday and Friday. These are live, instructor-led. Uh, part of it will be presentation. Part of it is going to be live coding that you are going to do. Uh, and it will include demonstrations, classroom exercises. And of course, the major thing is going to be the classroom project that we'll solve over many weeks because we'll, uh, we'll do many different variants of a problem. We'll try many different algorithms. Uh, we will you know see how to tweak the hyperparameters and stuff like that. So you know taking a project uh, to a level where it is working satisfactorily, where it is meeting the a benchmark or exceeding them, that will need some time and we'll work on one project over many different weeks. Uh, and there will be some pair programming or team programming. And like I said, this is really important that, everyone attends these session because if you miss out then it becomes a little difficult to catch up uh, office hours are just one hour a week on mondays uh, this is meant for q a uh, any, any other so any other discussion we want to have on, on perhaps some book reading or paper reading that we did earlier we can discuss that uh, but more importantly there's going to be uh, project feedback so if you're stuck somewhere uh, we'll try to solve that and we'll brainstorm, we'll brainstorm. I can give you feedback and you can also get feedback from your peers, uh, you know, how they are solving the problem, how they are approaching it, and uh, if they are also stuck somewhere. So that is why office hours are also going to be critical. Uh, if you miss an office hour, it's okay. We'll still have a Slack group, but again, I would highly recommend that you don't miss office hours either. So this is uh, five hours of you know, time which we'll do regularly every week. Other than that, because there is some uh, project and assignment work, uh, uh, the intention is not to, you know, do it like uh, a typical classroom or university setting where you have a lot of homework, but because there's a project where you have to work on your own or uh, with your team, where the instructor is not, uh, you know, helping you uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So you have to put in around three to five hours a week, which is mo most of it is going to be spent writing code, but sometimes you know reading up a chapter from a book uh, or even a research paper uh, will take up some time. So it will depend on, uh, and you can do it at your own pace. Uh, and I'll come to the deadlines in a moment. 
Yep. So in all, this is like four plus one plus five. So this is around 10 hours a week. Uh, okay. How do classroom projects work? So uh, we have, because we want everyone to remain in sync and work in tandem. So there are weekly check-ins, uh, which are like soft deadlines. If you're not able to meet a deadline, it's okay. You can always catch up later. But again, it's highly recommended because once you start to like uh, lag behind a little bit, then it becomes a little difficult because you know if you're like a week behind everyone else, then they're discussing something else, you're discussing something else. So uh, it's not ideal, but if it happens, it can be taken care of. You can always catch up. But you have to finish the classroom projects by the end of the course. That is the hard deadline, right? And these will be self-graded, so you don't have to submit them. There will be rubrics, uh, different rubric items will be defined, and you just have to verify that you meet all the requirements, and that is uh, all you need to do. Uh, for take-home projects, it's a little different. Uh, there are no weekly deadlines. Uh, we will reveal this project maybe uh, you know, in week two, between week two and week three. So you will have around uh, two, two and a half weeks to work on the project. Uh, the soft deadline will be at the end of the course, but uh, given that uh, you know this this project will be more complex than the classroom project, we will allow for another one week. So one week after, like the, the course is supposed to run for four weeks, for the first course. So you'll get up to the fifth week to finish and submit your project, right? And uh, these projects have to be again self graded before you submit them. So you just make sure that you meet all the rubric criteria so that. You know, it's easier to pass and then I'll uh, grade them finally after the five week period is over, four or five week uh, period is over. And then you'll get feedback on that. Uh, so it's, it's, we are not going to, uh, you know, assign points or anything. So if you meet all the rubric points, then uh, you pass the project. Uh, in terms of tools, uh, it's really simple. We are going to need GitHub a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure if you can access GitHub from your uh, work computers, uh, which is okay because we don't necessarily require GitHub access directly. You don't have to interact uh, with GitHub using a Git client. Uh, this is going to happen from Google Collab, which is number two here. We are going to use Collab for most of the work. It's fine if you have a local setup, if you want to work locally, that is also fine, but just make sure you are able to upload that code to you know, collab or GitHub directly because otherwise it will become difficult for you to get feedback. Keep that in mind, uh, but it's totally fine if you want to, you know, we'll, we'll discuss the setup requirements. It's relatively easy. So if you want to use Anaconda or otherwise you want to do it locally, that is also fine. Uh, for course three, we'll also use AWS because the algorithms that we'll train on will be data heavy and we want to isolate them. Uh, the, like, uh, the finer details are still like, being worked out. So, but yeah, much before we start to work with AWS, you'll get your credentials or access or whatever, and an appropriate number of credits or AWS hours uh, that you can use to train the algorithms. Collab has a, a decent uh, GPUs. It does have a few constraints. It is also a little finicky sometimes, uh, but uh, it's relatively uh, simple to work with because you're essentially running a Jupyter Notebook in the cloud. So for most of, uh, for the entirety of uh, course one and course two, we'll be using just Collab. Uh, where, where you need GitHub though, is that you know every time you make a significant change to your code, you want to take a backup. And there are, I think, two, three different options. You can do it, uh, you, you can convert it to GitHub, you can save it to Google Drive, or you can download it. GitHub is preferred because everything is online and versioned correctly. Uh, again, I'm not sure if you, you have access to uh, Google Drives, but if nothing else works, then you can just download and version it locally. Would we be able to use our personal machines if that makes it easier to access these tools? Uh, I'm sorry? Are we allowed to use our personal machines for this if it makes it easier to access these tools? Yes, absolutely. So, so there's no restriction on the use of your personal machines because none of the data is uh, we are going to use or code is you know, related to your work. Uh, so it's fine to use your personal machines, uh, but uh, just make sure that you have uh, the setup right. So, which will require Python and a few packages, which we'll discuss later. 
and of course uh, if if we require some gpu for for some of the projects where we be dealing with uh, we're dealing with pixel data then collab is preferable because you can get gpus automatically on a local machine you would require cuda and uh, stuff like that okay uh, how are we going to communicate throughout the course so i'll set up uh, a slack workspace the workspace is actually already set up i'm going to set out uh, send out invites uh, tonight so all of you will get an email uh, with a link to join this workspace and then we'll create different channels, common channels and teammates and so on. And uh, if you're facing any issues or if you have any questions, uh, you can drop me an email. That is my uh, email right there. So feel free to uh, send me an email. You can also DM me on Slack. Yeah, I think that's uh, everything I wanted to share uh we are right on time but if, if there are any questions uh, related to this i can answer them right now if you have questions later on uh, feel free to drop me emails i do want to mention that uh, i'm working in ist the indian standard time zone so there will be some lag between the time our questions come in and then i will answer them yeah i do have one quick question uh, so for do, do you have any internal Qualcomm resource or GPUs or compute resource instead of uh, lab or yeah, so right now we don't I think we were I don't know if Marisa is still there on the call but we were having a discussion about this thing uh, but the good thing is that we are going to use uh, GPUs intensively only in course three so until we reach course three we can make do with collab. Which, uh, which I think will be adequate for all of us. Okay, I have another question for the uh, screening questions that we all took. Okay. Um, do you have a reference answer to share? Because for some of the questions, I feel like none of the options seems to be correct to me. I'm just curious. No, no. Uh, uh... Okay, there, there could be a bug, I can't rule that out. So if you think there is a bug in one of the questions, if you can drop me uh, just one line at that email, mm. I can check and reply. Okay, all right, thanks. So Faran, one other question is, uh, I'm not that well versed with TensorFlow and it's been probably a year and a half which I had ever touched it. So do you think there is something that I should uh, probably, you know, get a hands-on experience on uh, in the next few weeks so that I'm much more ready by the end of the course for the project? Uh, yeah, that would make sense. Uh, if you have used TensorFlow, I think it has only gotten easier over time, the APIs, uh, and uh, also it is it looks much closer to PyTorch now because uh, I think we, we are going to use version two of TensorFlow, right? So which is yeah, that's the one that but, I've never used, but I, I have read that it has got much more uniform right. and it's easier. So right. So we, yeah, I mean, if you, if you have time, then please feel free to catch up on the field of TensorFlow two point oh. Okay. So anything that is usual, the the examples that are there on TensorFlow website should be helpful for this course. Those should be. If you want, I can share a few links. I'll okay, do that. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Please, yeah, please remind me. I'll I'll share on Slack. Sure. Yeah, actually, if there's a good guide for people who are expert in TensorFlow 1 to become uh, uh, comfortable in 2, that would be very helpful. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, do you have any kind of like uh, references or uh, that you have something that you can share uh, for us to go through? Uh, for reinforcement learning? Yeah, for anything like reinforcement learning, Python, yeah, uh, TensorFlow. Share, Right, right. Go, I'll share go, all go, the go. resources. Yeah, that is why we are setting up Slack. So I'll share everything there. Okay. And even today's presentation, you're going to share it in the same. Yeah, format. the share. Uh, yeah, the presentation recording and other slides are also going to share. Are there more questions?
Yeah, what we have again, uh, Farhan, check with um, Aritra. I sent an email to her. What we have is unscheduled is at 10 o'clock uh, uh, PST. Yeah. yeah, let me check with her. And I'll update everything on uh, Slack. Cool. Uh, if there are no other questions, I think. Uh, hey, Farhan, I have one question. So you said about Slack. I have never used Slack. How do we go about configuring it? Uh, uh, yeah, there is uh, actually no configuration needed. Okay. You can just uh, follow the link that uh, that will be shared with you. I think you'll need to sign up to Slack. That's all you need to do. I see. Uh, okay. There is, it's pretty straightforward to use. Okay. The good thing so, about Slack is that you get uh, different channels and different threads. So, you know, the discussion is pretty well organized versus another, like we, we could have used it's pretty much like Microsoft Teams if you use that. Okay, okay, got it. So it the link hasn't been shared yet, right? It hasn't been. I'll, I'll okay. get an email. Here. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, I think there are no more questions. Then I'll stop right here. Uh, thank you all once again for joining today. Like I said, uh, we will convene again on Thursday. Uh, because there are there is some confusion about the exact timing, I'll send out an email and I'll also uh, send you invites to Slack. And the references and everything else that we talked about that will also be shared on Slack before Thursday. Cool. Yeah, thank Again. you. Look forward on Thursday. Thanks. See you on Thursday. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you.